Hey, this is Özgür from Digidemi.com. In today's video, you'll learn how to use Rotobrush, or Rotobrush 2, I should say, now that the tool has finally been updated, in After Effects. We'll have a look at how to create a cutout, an intricate mask, and then take that into Photoshop, and then clean up the background, and then replace the original background with that clean version. So if you want to learn how to clean up or replace backgrounds, this one's for you. Right, so here we are in After Effects, and this is the video in question. Let me just play this once to see what we have. You can see we have the girl in the foreground and then the two boys in the background. And the task now is to try and isolate her and then place her in front of a clean background by removing the two kids and this ore here from the video. So let's see how we can do this. As with anything in After Effects, there are a couple of different ways of approaching this as well. But since Rotobrush has been updated, and it actually works well now, I'm going to use that and see how far that takes us. So I'll go and select the Rotobrush. And for this to work, we have to be inside the layer, and that's done by double-clicking on the layer here. And I'll just go and pull this back. So I'm on the first frame. And you see my cursor now shows me the Rotobrush tool. And I can resize this by holding down Command, and then clicking and dragging right to make it bigger, or dragging it left to make it smaller. Now since our aim is to isolate her, I'm going to go and paint on her simply by clicking and dragging like that. And this will initiate the roto brush. You see as soon as I do this, this purple line gets created. And this is looking at the differences in color, contrast and brightness. So as soon as there's a change in color or contrast in this case here, it tells the roto brush not to work on this left side. So we're going to need to expand this by painting on, making sure that I don't go near the edges too much. Because if I do this, let's say if I just go and click and drag this, you see this area gets selected as well. And if this happens, of course you can press command Z to undo. Or you can just simply hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and this turns the roto brush into a red brush. And if I now paint with the Alt key held down, this is now telling After Effects to exclude these areas. So I just paint these away, like that. And I let go of Alt, and then keep painting in green, so I include as much of this as possible. There's a bit of an area here as well. You'll also notice that I'm able to change the size of this brush without actually using the Command and Drag function. That's because I'm using a tablet, so if I press harder, you see the brush is a bit thicker. Whereas if I don't apply as much force, you see I get a thinner brush like this. So that's one advantage of using a tablet. Otherwise, you can of course use a mouse, and then use the command key, and then click and drag to resize it. I'm just going to keep including these as well. Let's go over here, and then select as much of this as possible. I'll include the hand as well. This updated roto brush is actually quite good. It understands the motion blur as well, and it actually does a good job on those. So I'm going to keep selecting these bits here. And this section is the one that I don't want to include, so I'm going to hold down Alt, and then paint this red shirt out. And then here as well. So I'm holding down Alt and painting these. Now if you don't want to see this section here, we could hold down Alt and then paint this away as well, like that. Now that seems about right now. I'll just go around the entire shape to make sure that I don't have anything kind of left out. So, for example, this part of the hair isn't selected, so I'm going to include this as well. Now it's selected a bit too much, so I'm going to hold down Alt and then paint this away. And then maybe add a bit more of this area as well to the selection. Now you'll notice I'm not spending much time on the really fine detail here, like this stray hair or this section here where it's a bit fuzzy and blurry. That's going to be done by using a different tool called the Refine Edge tool, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, let's go and propagate this effect onto the next frames. The easiest way would be to hit play by pressing spacebar. And just keep an eye on that purple outline. Now this would work if the shape or the shapes you're trying to highlight is quite a straightforward and easy enough shape for After Effects to work with. Now since there's a lot of detail here, it actually kind of loses its pattern, if you like, down here. Now the left side here works fine, but this area is a bit of a problematic area. So let me go back and do this manually. So I'm going to go back. Now on the second frame, you can see most of this left side is fine, maybe except for this OR coming in. So I'm going to hold down ALT and then paint this as well. So that's excluded now. And I'm going to do a bit more work here. So I'm going to hold down ALT and then just paint these away like that. So After Effects knows not to include these sections. I do want this gray area here, so I'm going to paint it with the green color. And I'll go forward by one frame. 
and just keep an eye on this area in particular. Now it seems like this red area is coming through again, so I'm going to hold down Alt and then paint away. And everything else seems okay. I'm going to advance forward by one more frame, and we can do this by pressing page down on the keyboard. And now the left side seems all fine. And here again, we have this red area showing through. So I'm going to hold down Alt and then paint away. And then here as well, there's a bit of a red area here as well. So I'm going to hold down Alt here and then paint this away. And page down again. And I'm going to do the same again, Alt and then paint away. Page down. And I'll just keep doing this until After Effects understands that we don't want this section. Now, while I was working on this, I just noticed that this section is now included. So let me go back by one frame by pressing page up. And you can see here, the arm of this kid is also being included. So I'm going to press page up again. So I think this is when it starts being included. So I'm going to hold down Alt and then paint this away. And I'll go page down. And now it's no longer included, you can see. And I'll just go and double check this. So Alt and paint away. Page down. Seems like we've kind of saved this section here. And also this section seems okay. And the rest of the frame here and around her hair as well, that's all looking fine. So I'm gonna press page down a couple of more times. And I can see now this section actually starts seeping through. So I'm gonna go back, page up. I'll hold down Alt and then paint away. And then page down. Alt and paint this again. Now the amount of work you do here really depends on the clip that you're working with. Sometimes you won't have this issue, sometimes you'll have more issues, but you'll have to kind of go around the entire purple outline to make sure that it all looks perfect. Because this part, creating the cutout, is probably the most important part of this entire process. So if you start off wrong, the rest is not going to work really well. So I'm going to keep pressing page down. And that seems all fine now. And now here at this stage, I can see that this section is being subtracted. So I'm going to just paint this in. And the rest is all fine. So I'm going to press page down. And this section as well here. I'm going to press page down. And that's looking all good. Now I am pretty confident from this point on that it's going to do a good job. So instead of pressing page down a number of times, I'm just going to go and hit spacebar so that After Effects can do the rest of this for us. So I'll just press spacebar and see what happens. There was actually a bit of an issue there on the left side of the hair. Let me go back by pressing page up a couple of times. I think that After Effects considered this area also as part of the hair that I was trying to select. So keep an eye on this now if I press page down. It thinks that this bush in the background is actually part of the hair, which means if I keep pressing page down, you see this will be kind of isolated in its own right. So I'll go back a couple of frames here and I'll hold down Alt and then just paint this away to tell After Effects that this actually isn't part of the hair. That went a bit too far. You see why this is happening. It's too similar. The colors are very similar here. That's why it's getting confused. So I'm just going to kind of give it a hand by kind of painting it like that. And then page down now. You see that seems to have fixed that issue as well. And now I'm going to press spacebar to automate the rest of this. As it's playing, I am keeping an eye on all the edges of this outline, the purple outline. And it seems like it's doing quite a good job. And it just finished it now. Now you'll notice here, if I rewind back a little, here, we can still see through the background here. Now again, depending on how detailed you want this to be, you could just hold down Alt and then paint these away. But in this case, I'm just going to leave this as it is. But if this is bothering you, feel free to kind of cut these out as well. And now that we have this initial outline created and propagated onto the next frames, let's go and refine the edges of this so that we get a better resolution around the hair. So for that, we use the second tool here called Refine Edge Tool. And this will allow us, let me go back to the beginning now. This will allow us to paint around the edges so After Effects understands a little better what to do with those stray hairs. So for example, let's say if I start here, simply click and paint around the edges like that. Now painting with the Refine Edge tool is our way of telling After Effects to spend a bit more time around the edges here so that it gives us a better result when it comes to these kind of fuzzy areas, you know, transparent or semi-transparent areas fuzzy areas, hair, fur, grass, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to keep painting around the edges here, like that. And you'll notice this is now turning those edges into a black and white version. Anything that's white will be fully visible, and anything that's black is going to be completely invisible. 
So our aim here is to try and get the background as black as possible and the foreground or the hair as white as possible with some greys in the middle because some of the hair here, as you can see, is semi-transparent. So I'm just going to go and zoom in a little bit here so we can see what's happening. I'm going to do this by pressing Command plus or the scroll wheel on the mouse and then spacebar to pan around like that. And I'll just go and paint around these areas. And then I'll do the same here as well. And it's smart enough to understand that this is the edge, so it makes it all white. And let's go down. Now the area here doesn't need to be as thick, because you can see the hair is quite straightforward here. So there aren't too many stray hairs here. So let's go and bring this down as a thin line. And here we start having some more issues, so I'm going to make this a little thicker by pressing harder. Like that. That's looking good. So I'm going to come down. And then paint around here as well. That's looking fine. There are a couple of stray hairs here as well. I'm just going to go paint these in. And I just noticed there's a bit here as well, so I'm going to paint these as well, like that. Now, although we don't need to do it, let me zoom out first. Although we don't need to, we can go and extrapolate this down here as well. So, for example, if I wanted these to be refined as well, I can just go and click and then paint these. But because these areas don't really need as much attention, we don't really need the Refine Edge tool here. So I can undo this. And what we need to do now is to propagate the Refine Edge to the following frames as well. So I can either press Spacebar to see how this plays. Or if I want to be a bit more precise and then control this frame by frame, I could just go and press Page Down just like we did before. I can press Page Down. And as I'm doing this, I'm keeping an eye on the edges here so that we don't get some strange results like the blacks don't go all the way out or the whites don't go all the way in so that the edges remain quite stable. So I'm going to press page down again. I'll just keep pressing page down. Now as I was doing this I actually noticed there's a bit of an issue here as well where the hair meets the ore here in the background. So let me go up a couple of frames while pressing page up. So here actually I do want this to spend a bit more time on this area so I'm going to go and paint this as well. There we go. So it's only going to use this right side, the white side, as the visible side. And then the background, where the O is, is going to be completely invisible. So I'm now going to press page down. And that seems better now. And you'll notice, if I keep going back and updating things, the frames that have been calculated before will be discarded. For example, now I have the first five frames calculated. If I go back a couple of frames, and now if I make an update, let's say for example, I just go and add this section as well, where this stray hair is as well. See what happens to the green bars here. So I'm going to go here, and then paint this in. You see, they disappeared, which means that these frames will now need to be recalculated. That's why it's important that you make these updates as you go. So you don't just press spacebar, and then go back to the beginning, and then make some changes, because that will mean that it will have to recalculate the whole thing. Instead, we go frame by frame, and just make adjustments as and when we need to. So I'm going to press page down again, and again, and as I do this, I'm just keeping an eye on the edges, and that's looking all good. So far, so good. Now, there's a bit of an issue now just above her head, you can see here. I think there's just not much information here, so it's getting confused. Let me go back by one frame. This is still okay, but I'm going to hold down Alt, and then paint these away as well now, with the Alt key held down, so I'm subtracting this area from the Refine Edge selection. And I'll press page down again. And now this section needs to be subtracted as well. So I'm going to hold down Alt and then paint this away. Like that. Maybe a little more. Like that. And then page down again. And that seems to have been fixed. Right, this seems like it's working now. So I'm just going to go and press spacebar to play it from here and see if After Effects can actually get the rest of this automatically. Seems like it's all working fine. Still very good. Now there's a bit of an issue here on the right hand side where the hair ends. So let me go back a couple of frames. This is the section I'm talking about. So let me go back. Here. I'm actually going to go and extend it a little more onto the shoulder, like that. And then now press page down. And that's looking better now. So it's including these areas as well. We could actually expand this a little more. And now it's spending a little more time here to make sure that these areas are calculated properly as well. And now I'll go and press spacebar. 
and see how good a job After Effects can do after this point. Now I stopped it here actually. That's because there's a bit of an area here where I see some of the background. So I'm going to go back to see when that issue actually starts happening. Looks like it was a little earlier here. And I can actually make this area included inside the refined edge as well, which will discard all of these frames, but that's fine. So I'm just going to go and paint in these areas as well. Then page down again. And again. And it looks like this is now better. So we have some grays here, which means I'll be seeing some of the background through, but not all of it. I need to extend it down here as well now. So let me go back. Let me zoom into this, Command Plus. And I'll go back by one more frame. There's a bit of an issue here as well. Do you see there's the green showing through? So I'm going to paint this in as well. And then here. And then page down. And that's looking much better now. So I don't see as much green anymore. Great. Let me zoom back out. And then hit spacebar to let After Effects work its magic. Remember again, everything that's white will be completely visible, and everything that's black around the edges will be completely invisible. And it looks like the things that we want to keep visible are actually all white, and then everything else, so the background, is all black, which is great. And now that this is done, we need to tell After Effects to freeze these so it doesn't have to recalculate all of these frames every time you want to preview them. That's done by clicking on this freeze button. And when we do this, it will cache all of these frames to the RAM, which means it doesn't have to calculate every single time you want to preview. So this will take a short while, but once it's done, you don't need to wait as long anymore. Now that the frames are frozen, we can actually see what we've got. Just remember, if you want to make any more changes to either your Roto Brush or the Refine Edge tool, you can't because the frames are frozen. So if you want to start, let's say, making more adjustments by adding more areas here, or maybe updating your Roto Brush area, you'll have to go and unfreeze it by clicking on the Freeze button again, but that will mean that you'll have to redo the whole thing again. So really, you should use the freeze button once you're 100% sure that you won't make any more changes to this. So, to see her without the background, let's go to Composition. And now that should give us a cutout. Let me go back to the beginning. And here's what we have. If I play it, we now have her with no background. But of course, we can do some more adjustments to this. First of all, let's go and see if we can refine. Let me stop the playback. Let's see if we can refine the edges here that are not the hair. For example, these edges here, or this side of the arm here as well. So let me go back again. Anytime you want to make some adjustments to the edges that weren't calculated as part of the Refine Edge tool, you need to go to here, where it says Roto Brush and Refine Edge, and in particular, you need to come down to here, where it says Roto Brush Matte. This section will let you control what happens to the areas that have been brushed with the purple color. And the Refine Edge Matte is going to let you control what happens to the hair area that we created by using the Refine Edge tool. So I'm going to start with the Roto Brush Matte. Let me just zoom into one of these areas, let's say maybe to this side here. So I'm going to press Command Plus, and then Spacebar to move around here. Now Feather, as you may know, is the softening of the edges here. So let me just go and increase the Feather. You see this is with Feather. And if I decrease it, this is with no Feather, so it's quite sharp. And with all of these, we want to find a sweet spot where things don't look too fake and still believable, but it doesn't actually start harming the actual image or the selection that we created. So let me now go back and increase the feather, let's say, to 10. Now that's fine, the softening of the edges will be fine, but the issue here is that I'm seeing some of the background. Now that could be fixed with this option here, where it says Shift Edge. Now if I go and drag this towards left, I'm now shifting the edge or eating into the edges here, by effectively making the mask a little smaller. There's also contrast, which is pretty much the opposite of the feather. So if you have soft edges and you want to make them hard and sharp again, you can increase the contrast. You see this will make the edges sharp again. In this case, I don't want that, so I'm going to lower this down. That's looking better. And let me just check the other side as well. That's looking not too bad. Let me zoom out and then play this. Now that doesn't look too bad. And there's one more option here called Reduce Chatter. It doesn't look like we need to use too much of this right now. But in your videos, if the mask starts jumping around, so it kind of goes in and out, in and out, in and out, that's called Chatter. You can increase this Reduce Chatter option 
which will have an impact on the render time, so this will kind of slow the whole thing down. But this will create a better interpolation between frames, meaning that the mask won't be jumping as much. So right now, I'll just reduce this down to, let's say, maybe 10 or 15. And we also now want to see what the hair looks like, maybe in front of a different background. So let me first go and turn off my transparency grid. We can see the fuzziness of the hair here. So let me zoom in. Maybe go to a different frame, let's say here. Now, in order to control what happens to these areas, the black and white areas, if you remember, we need to go to Refine Edge Mat, and then we had the Smooth option, which is going to kind of round off these harsh edges. So take a look. So the edges are smoother now, so let me zoom in a little more. This is without smoothing. And this is with smoothing. You see, the edges are smoother now, so we don't have any weird jagged edges. Let me zoom back out. It's a bit too much actually now, so it looks like a nice curvy line that we created, which we don't want. I'm going to go to smooth, maybe set that to something like 5. And we had the same feather, but this time for the hair area. So I can go and increase the feather to make these softer, like that. The problem with the feather usually is that it will create some halo, which you probably don't want. So I'm going to undo this. You can see that the edges are actually soft enough already. If I wanted to sharpen them, I'd go to contrast, push this towards right and see what happens here. So this starts kind of eating into the hair. That was a bit too much maybe. So let me just go and lower this down to let's say 25. And then maybe I can up the feather, let's say, I don't know, 15 or so. That was a bit too much. So let me just come down to five maybe. That's looking better. And I can still see some of the background here. So I can go to where it says shift edge, lower that down to let's say maybe minus 10%. So that starts eating in to the hair here. And again, if the hair area keeps jumping, I can reduce the chatter as well by going to where it says chatter reduction. And you have the two options. There's the more detailed option, which is quicker, or the smoother option, which is slower to render. At the moment, I'll just leave this turned off. But like I said, if your masks are jumping around, just go and use one of these, and that will give you a much better result. And if your subject is moving a lot, and you have some motion blur on the clip, you can go and turn this on as well, the use motion blur button. And that's going to add some motion blur to the edges. I don't know if you can see, let me zoom in a little more. This is without the motion blur. This is with the motion blur. If you wanted to control the amount of motion blur, you'd go to here, where it says motion blur. And then you can control these just like you would inside the composition settings. Now I'm going to leave these alone on their default settings. And the last option, which is going to be quite useful, is this decontaminate edge colors option. Let me just zoom out first by pressing shift and forward slash. You see the edge colors will show through the green in the background. Now, if you don't want that, you can turn this decontaminate edge colors option on. And just like that, it will paint the edges with the color that's the opposite color of what it sees. So in this case, if it's seeing green, it's going to start painting the edges with a bit more brown and magenta-ish colors, based on, of course, what's inside as well here. So it's quite a smart filter. Let me zoom into the hair and then pan up. This is width, so keep an eye on this area here around the edges. And this is without the decontamination. One issue with this decontaminate edge colors option is that it kind of tends to make this area a bit smudgy. So you'll notice that some detail will be lost there. So look, if I go and turn this on, it kind of paints it almost. So turn this on. You can see here as well, it's quite smudgy. Whereas before, we had some detail there. So for now, I'll leave this turned off because I actually will eventually end up with a green background anyway. So this might not be an issue in the end. And then I'll just go and zoom out by pressing Shift and forward slash again. And now we have a decent cutout. Now, even if you didn't want to replace the background with anything else, this would still be extremely useful when you want to apply effects to your clips. Let's say, for example, you want to apply an effect just to her and then nothing to the background. So let's see how that's done. So let me come to the timeline. And now scroll up and twirl this up. And I'm going to go and select this clip, duplicate it by pressing Command D, or you can go to Edit, Duplicate. And now I have two clips playing on top of each other. I can go to the bottom clip and I can call this background. And then the foreground one, I'll call this cutout. If I now select the background clip and then delete the roto brush effect from the background clip, so that effectively reveals the contents of the background, I now have the original clip in the background and then the cutout on the foreground. 
So let's say if I want to move this to the side, I can just go and click and drag this here. And now I have two girls doing exactly the same thing. So if I play, that's what that looks like. But I want to put her back. I'll go to Edit, Undo. So without changing its position, I could just go and simply apply an effect to her. So let's say, for example, I select the cutout, go to Effects and Presets, and apply something like Lumetri Color. And I can start making some changes. Let's say we go and lower down the exposure a little, maybe. And maybe increase the temperature. And then maybe bring the contrast up. And then maybe the highlights down. Shadows up. So now you can see I'm affecting only her and nothing else. So if I go back to the beginning, if I turn this effect off, this is before and this is after. So only she is being affected and nothing's happening to the background. Or let's say I want to leave her in color and then the background say black and white. If I go to my background, apply the same effect, Lumetri color, go to basic correction. Let's say we bring down the saturation to zero. And now she's the only thing that's left in color. And if I go forward, you see it's exactly the same effect throughout the entire clip because we created a cutout of her in the first place. So if that's all you need to do, apply an effect to a specific portion of the clip, that's it, you can stop watching the video here. But what I actually want to do is to go and clean up the background so that we don't have anything in the background except her. And we'll do that with the help of Photoshop. So let me first go and delete the effect from the background. And for the time being, I'm going to hide the cutout. Now, I want to find a frame in this video where we see most of the background, which we'll then need to export into Photoshop, clean that up so that we have just the background, and then bring that back into After Effects, and then use it instead of this original background. So let me go and see where that frame might be. So here we actually have these kids in the background, so that's not really helpful. So let me see if I can go forward. Now I can see a lot of background here, so that's good. It looks like we're getting there. Maybe one of these frames will actually work. So there's a lot of background here, so I can kind of copy and paste these pixels over here. Let me see if we have anything better. Now the ore comes back up. So I think I'm going to go and use one of these frames. Let's say this one, maybe. So now I'll take this from here to Photoshop by going to Composition, and then Save Frame As, File. But I forgot to do one thing, actually. So right now, if I was to export this, that would export the entire timeline as individual frames. So I'm going to delete this from here. Go back to my timeline and then set the beginning of the work area bar here and also the end of the work area bar here as well. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard followed by N. So B sets the beginning of the work area and sets the end of the work area. So we now have just one frame that we're going to be exporting. Then we go to composition, save frame as, file. And now this will be exported as a PSD file. So that's great. Let me just click to double check. We don't actually need the alpha, so I can go and turn this off. So it's just exporting the RGB, since there's no transparency here anyway. And I'm going to leave the rest as they are. Press OK, and then tell it where to be saved. So I'm going to go and call this Background Cleanup. I'll save it as a PSD file. And I'll hit Save. And then Render. Once we have that file, I'll go and open that up in Photoshop. And now we'll clean this up. But this looks like the frame is actually smaller than our 1920 by 1080 frame. So let me just double check from image, image size. It is indeed smaller, so I must have made a mistake in After Effects. Let me cancel this out. And then switch back to After Effects. And then come down here. And then select this and duplicate. And here where it says Render Settings, I'll change it from Current Settings to the Best Settings. And then I'll leave the rest as they are. I'll just go ahead and set the new output name as background cleanup 2. And I don't want to save this in a subfolder. Hit save. And then render again. And then go back. And then open this one up. Looks like this is the right size now, so let me just double check. It is indeed 1920 by 1080. So we can now go and get rid of the old one. In fact, I can just go and delete that. And then we come here. And now what I need to do is to create a clean plate where we have nothing but the background. 
So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to create a new layer and call this one Cleanup. And you could use any method that you like, but I'll use the healing brush to start with. So I'm going to go to, let's say, somewhere here, making sure that the sample all layers is turned on. Otherwise, it won't work. So I'm going to hold down Alt and let's say sample an area, say, from here, maybe. And I'm going to use this intersection here where the convergence happens between the light shade and the dark shade here. I'll just try and follow this line up to maybe here and then click and paint. This will take a couple of different tries. So let's say if I just go as far as I can here. And I'll just keep painting on her face as well. And eventually, like I said, what we're trying to get is a clean backdrop and nothing else. So let me make my brush a little larger. And I'll hold down Alt and then maybe click somewhere here. So I can paint these away. Now, most of the times you want to find an intersection like this so you can actually follow this along. So I'm going to hold down Alt here. Let's say here and click. And then line these up. Then click and paint. Say like that. And then once more, maybe somewhere here. And then line these up. And then keep painting away. And then maybe one last time here. And then paint this section away as well. The problem with this is because we didn't really have too much of a background. We are creating lots of repeat patterns as well. You see here, this little bar has been repeated quite a few times. And then same here as well. So it looks like there's a weird pattern here that repeats. So we need to go and make some more adjustments. Let's say this we can get rid of manually. And I just broke the line here now, actually. So I'm going to undo this. Maybe go here, line this up, then click and paint away. And then I'll just do the same here a couple of times just to, just to make it a little less uniform. So I'm just going to kind of add some variation here like that. And then maybe kind of paint this darkness as well, because that's quite similar to this and then a darker version of this. So maybe I'll hold down Alt and then kind of paint this section in like that. And then do the same here as well, just so that they don't look all the same. Again, I have some kind of bushes here, so that and that and these are all the same actually. So I'm going to maybe copy something from here and then paint in here. And then maybe copy something here and then paint over these areas. And I think that should be good enough. So this was before and this is after. There's a bit of a blotch here as well, so let me just go and paint this away. That's better. And I'll just go and save this now. So I'll go File, Save. I'll press OK. And then I'll switch back to After Effects. Now I want to go back to my project panel. Bring that PSD file in. So this was the background cleanup too. I'll bring this in as footage, so I don't need the individual layers actually. So I'll just bring this in as footage. And I'll have all the layers merged. And I'll go back to this composition, take this background, and then drop it right at the bottom. Now we can turn off our background video. So we just had the background image here, and then turn on the cutout. So now we have her in front of a clean backdrop. So if I now go back and then maximize this, now on every single frame, the backdrop is going to remain the same. So if I go back here, you see the backdrop remains the same. Now, one more touch that would actually sell this entire shot would be to motion track the original clip and apply that camera information to this background image. Because the problem with this is, let me first go and drop the quality here so it doesn't take too long to preview. The problem with this is, if I play this back, is that the camera is handheld and it's moving around, but you see the backdrop always remains the same. So she's actually kind of going down, but the backdrop isn't going down. And that's looking a little fake. So to fix that, what we can do is to track the original background clip and then apply that tracking data to this background PSD file. So as the final step, let's go and do that. For that, we'll be using the tracker. So window, tracker. 
we'll select the video clip that we want to track and then we'll go down to track motion let me increase the quality of this first by going to view resolution full and i'm going to go right back to the beginning now the thing that we need to track needs to be visible on the entire shot and it also needs to be static on the entire shot for example i couldn't track this logo here because that's not part of the static background so let's see what we can use it's quite tricky because everything is a bit blurry here so i'm just going to go push this forward now maybe we could use this leaf here looks like that doesn't move as much let me go back a little That leaf doesn't seem to be moving too much so maybe we could use that looks like it is actually moving a little bit towards the end but i think we can get away with that so let's see so i'm going to push the tracker onto that leaf i'm going to go back to the beginning first it's still visible here i'm going to push the tracker onto the leaf like that and then zoom right in so i'm going to press command plus to zoom in there and then make this a little larger and then increase the search region as well and i'm going to go ahead and hit this analyze forward by one frame button once to see what this does and that looks like that's actually sticking to that leaf that's great so as the leaf moves the tracker follows it so i think that's working so i'm going to go ahead and analyze this automatically by hitting this analyze forward button and it looks like the tracker actually sticks to that leaf which is great if i go back and play you see that the tracker sticks to the leaf so now we can use that data to move the background image as well so for that i'll go to where it says edit target and then i'll select this bg cleanup so i'm going to go here bg cleanup okay and then i'll just go and hit apply and then it says okay what do you want to apply this on x or y or both i'm going to do both and what that does is to move the center of that layer to where the tracker was and it moves the layer as if that's attached to that tracker so if you play it now you see let me just lower down the quality first if i go and play it you see the background moves with the camera but of course it's in the wrong place so that's an easy fix i can either now select let me just twirl this up and then select my background layer and then press u on the keyboard to see all the keyframes i can either now highlight all of these position keyframes by clicking on the word position and I can drag all of these down like that so they all update at the same time or I could also use the anchor point of this so if I press A so let me undo this if I press A I can also move the anchor point of this layer around and that will kind of shift the layer without touching its position like that but of course as the layer moves that's going to start showing the edges as well so if I now go to a different frame because the layer is moving the edges will start showing through if i go forward you see the edges are going to show through that's quite a common issue and there are different ways of fixing this i'm simply going to go and increase the scale of this a little more like that maybe and then shift it towards right a little maybe and let's see what that looks like if i go back and play there's a bit of the top here that's showing through as well so let me just shift this up a little I'll go right to the beginning and then preview from here and in fact let me now set the quality back to full and then do one more preview to see what this actually looks like now as it's previewing i can actually see there's a bit of an issue with the colors here around the edges now the left side seems to be working all fine the hair seems perfect only this section here seems a little off so let me now stop this playback go into my effect controls and then select the cutout and then I'll zoom in here. So I'm going to press Command Plus. Here. And because this section is controlled with the Roto Brush Mat, that's where I need to go to. To start with, maybe let's go and reduce this Reduce Chatter option down to zero. So that will speed up everything else that we do. And then I can go and lower down the feather, let's say to five. And then maybe shift the edge further towards left, let's say by 50%. And now let's see what happens if I actually decontaminate the edge colors. Now that seems like it's actually doing a good job here. 
I'm going to go a little more with the shift edge to, let's say, minus 70%. That seems much better now. Let me zoom back out. That's much more believable now, so I'm going to go back. But now it looks like maybe we could do with a bit more feather, especially around these areas where we had lots of blur. So let me go to feather, increase that to, let's say, 15. That's looking a little better now. And then maybe we can go to motion blur and then increase the shutter angle to give it more motion blur. Let's say if I go and set this to 360, the higher the shutter angle, the blurrier the things will get. You see this is now blurry here. And to increase the quality of this, let me zoom in. To increase the quality of this, I can go and increase the samples per frame as well from let's say 8 to 24. And that's going to make it smoother. Let me zoom in a little here. So this is with samples per frame, let's say set to 4. So you'll actually start seeing some banding here. Whereas this one is 24, which reduces that effect. I'll zoom back out and then do one more preview. Let me stop this first. I can actually see that the feather actually makes it a little too soft around these edges. So I'm going to need to find a sweet spot between 15 and 5, so let's try maybe 10. That's a little better now around these edges. I'll do one more preview. And I actually want one more small cheat here. That's to clean up this bottom area here. I'm actually going to go and scale this whole cutout up a little. Let's say to 108 maybe. And then bring this down. Making sure that we don't cut the top of the head off. Let's say there. And then maybe I can place her towards right a little. I'm just going to cheat a little bit and hide some of the hand here as well. Let's say going that way. I can reframe it. Let's see what that looks like. Now I think that's too far to the right, so I'm going to push this back a little more. Maybe try and use the rule of thirds here as well, so we place her on the right hand side here of the image rather than the center. So I'm going to go back once again, and then preview this again. And I've just realized that we have another issue here, with the top of the frame being cut off. So I'll go to this background clip. And let's say we increase the scale of this until the top part is kind of clean as well. Now when you're scaling this up, it's going to scale up from this point because that's where the anchor point is. If you don't want that, you might want to reposition the whole thing by using the anchor point values again, like that. So this is what we have in the end. Remember I mentioned something about the chatter? If you look around the hair here, you'll actually be able to see it now. Where the mask actually jumps back and forth and it kind of reveals, let me zoom in a little here. It reveals parts of the hair and then it kind of makes them disappear again. Like this, do you see? These. Or there's some here on the right as well, look. You see how the mask is kind of jumping around? That can be fixed with the reduced chatter option. And that does take a little while to render. But if you want to reduce these imperfections as well, just go to the cutout. And then both for the rotor brush mat, which is the edges here where we didn't have the refined edge, we increase this to, let's say, 75%. And also the refined edge mats reduce chatter to smoother and slower to make it as good as it can be. And that's it. That's how we can isolate a moving subject and then clean up the background. Before you go, if you want to win a free, live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a 5-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here, and cross your fingers. So don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.